So for my next series of uh, videos, I thought I'd build up an IQ style radio using uh, a tiny Pico running MicroPython. Uh, so let's, first a couple of notes on MicroPython and, and the tiny Pico itself, and I'll include links to all this below. So MicroPython is an implementation of Python 3 uh, designed to run on microcontrollers. Uh, it runs on a variety of microcontrollers today, including ESP32, STM boards, ESP8266. Uh, there's a board out there called PyBoard as well. Uh, I won't go into the Python language. Uh, uh, I will share the kind of the code that I've developed as part of the radio, but I am far from an expert. I'm still learning. Uh, and as a Java slash C++ programmer, some of the Python concepts are, are tough, at least for me, to get my head around. The tiny Pico uh, itself, um, and uh, the, the the maker of this uh, has a YouTube channel called Unexpected Maker, and I'll include a link to that too. Uh, is an ESP32 dev board that runs the ESP32 version of the MicroPython firmware. So this is the tiny Pico right here. Let me just zoom into that so we can get a better a better view of that. Excuse me for a moment while I get it up there. Um, yeah, so as I was saying, it, uh, it runs a, 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 the ESP32 uh, Tiny Pico version of the MicroPython firmware. And you've got two choices with the, with the firmware. You can either just download it from the site or you can uh, build it yourself. Uh, I chose the latter, build it, building it up myself, uh, but setting up the uh, Espressive tool chain for the ESP32 series of boards uh, on my Pi 4 was, was actually a bit of a pain. So... Uh, so anyway, I uh, got it done. Uh, the board designer, uh, I believe his name's Sion, I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly, uh, has his own YouTube channel. Uh, and I'm embarrassed to say that after living in the States for 22 years, I can no longer tell New Zealand and Australian accents apart. I, I thought he was a New Zealander to start with. But anyway, that's, that's all my problem. So a quick uh, walk through some of the Tiny Pico's features and specs. Uh, it runs a 32-bit dual core at 240 megahertz. It has inbuilt 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, four megabytes flash, and you use a USB for programming. You can see I've got uh, the USB set up there. I've actually got this connected uh, to my Pi 4 at the moment, and that's what I'm, I have been using for programming. So how do you interact uh, with the board? Um, so the, the primary uh, command that you use to interact with a, a board running uh, MicroPython is the rshell command. Um, so as I mentioned before, I've got this all running on my uh, Pi 4, uh, and the rshell command can uh, simply be installed with uh, sudo apt-get install rshell, so it's out there uh, to download. So basically, as you can see, uh, here's the rshell command here, and you specify the uh, port that you're gonna use, Dev TTY USB zero and the board rate you're going to, that you're going to use to connect to the board. Uh, what our shell provides is is two main features. Uh, it firstly allows you to copy files from your host machine onto the board, uh, and that might be Python source, it might be binary files, images, what have you, and, and that gets stored on the flash uh, storage on the board itself. So I'll give you a quick example of that. So say I wanted to copy uh, radio run.py to the board. Uh, what you do is you basically specify this, uh, this virtual location here slash pi board in the R shell command, and that copies it to the flash storage on the uh, device itself. So the other thing that uh, the uh, pi board, uh, the other thing that the R shell uh, allows you to run is the REPL command. Uh, which is basically the Python command line on the board itself. Uh, so on this, uh, in this command line, you can execute any of the Python uh, code, uh, instructions, what have you, uh, that the uh, microcontroller, the, the MicroPython understands on the microcontroller. So let me show a simple example of uh, turning an LED off and on. So uh, basically what I need to do is first... Uh, uh, from the machine libraries, import pin, which is used to control all the uh, the pins on the microcontroller. And then I'll define uh, an LED uh, to be a pin, location 25, and then pin dot output. I want this is to be an output pin. 
And then I can simply uh, turn the pin, the LED on, or turn the LED off by executing those two commands. So let me just pan down so you can see that uh, happening on the on the board itself. So I'll move over. It's a bit hard to get the uh, both the command line and the board in the same uh, in the same thing here. But let me just turn the LED on. There you can see it coming on, and then I'll turn it off again. So there you go. That's basically uh, controlling the um, the board itself uh, using the uh, using the REPL command. And, and to sum up, um, kind of the, the MicroPython environment with the REPL um, is a, it's a lot more interactive than uh, perhaps sort of a traditional uh, use of uh, Arduino IDE uh, or Atmel, in that you can directly interact with the board rather than going through that traditional sort of compile and linking flashing step. You don't have to do any of that. Um, now certainly when you're building up modules and you want to copy those modules over to the board, um, you know, you develop the modules on your on your host system, where, you know, whether that's Linux or Windows or what have you. Uh, then you have to copy the files over and then you have to import them, uh, you know, with, uh, with at least the Python on the board. Uh, you do have to uh, sort of do a soft reboot on the board to, to re-import the files. But you know, the, the fact remains you can actually do uh, anything that Python supports directly using the REPL. So that's the setup with uh, MicroPython um, and uh, the, uh, the tiny Pico board. Uh, so let's move on now to kind of a block diagram of the, of the receiver, radio receiver that I'm going to uh, build up here. And this will be familiar to any of you who've seen some of my previous videos on uh, an IQ style radio, which which is what I'm going to build up, just the receiver portion to start with. So at a high level, the block diagram is as follows. The, the signals come in uh, received by the antenna and are passed to the band pass filter. Uh, and this is a critical component in all IQ style radios. And you want basically uh, a narrow band of signals in the, uh, in the region that you're interested in of the spectrum. Uh, and you only want those to come through to the, to the detector. So that's the band passes uh, function there. Uh, it then moves on to the TALO detector, and I'll include a link to what a TALO detector is. But basically, you give it uh, two signals at the local oscillator frequency, which is effectively the frequency that you want to receive at. So if you want to receive it, let's say, 7 megahertz, this signal here would be at 7 megahertz. Uh, it's a so-called uh, direct conversion uh, style, of, uh, style of receiver. So the, the special thing is that you provide that, uh, those two signals at zero and 90 degrees out of phase with one another. Uh, those two signals go into the TALO detector. They're mixed with the, uh, the incoming RF signal. And then out of that, uh, you get uh, two signals, the so-called I and the Q signals. And these are both at now the audio frequency. Um, and these I and Q signals are then passed to a 90 degree phase shifter and what that does is it basically suppresses the unwanted sideband uh, and through the configuration of how the signals come in here the i and the q signals come into the uh, phase shifter you'll either suppress the upper sideband or the lower sideband once you've done that you pass the uh, audio signal through to an audio amplifier and then you get audio out so what's the role of the Tiny Pico in all this? Well, the role of the Tiny Pico basically is to control that local oscillator. And there are three, uh, there are four major components in the, in the local oscillator. So I've got an encoder here that allows you to change the, um, change the frequency. I've got an LCD and a level shifter here that can display the frequency. And then I've, finally, I've got the SI5351 synthesizer uh, which the Tiny Pico controls to output those LO signals in 90, at 90 degrees and at zero degrees. So let's see where those various uh, components are on the board. Uh, so obviously here is, here is our LCD connected here. And this LCD uh, requires 5 volts. So I have to connect the SDA and the SCL from the LC, LCD through to the Tiny Pico, which is a 3.3 volt uh, board through this level shifter, and uh, I've shown this level shifter in, uh, in other videos. 
So there's the SDA and the SCL, SCL coming in from the uh, LCD and uh, it gets connected to the tiny Pico. So also here, here's the encoder here and the encoder here also uh, connects to the board through three pins, two for the encoder and one for the switch on the encoder. And then finally, here's the uh, SI5351 board. And again, that communicates through to the uh, Tiny Pico through SDA and SCL. Now, fortunately with this board, uh, because it's powered by 3.3 volts, I don't have to go through, uh, through the level shifter here. So that can connect directly to the board. So let's fire up the uh, local oscillator component uh, right now. And I just do that by going into the REPL and Im impl importing radio run. Sorry, I was stuck for words there. And as you can see, uh, I'm now displaying the frequency, uh, 7.010 megahertz there. And I've got the output of the SI5351 here. So there's two clock signals coming out of that and I'm displaying that on my oscilloscope that I've got up here. So let me try and, try and keep the uh, LCD, which you can just about see there. It's a little bit hard to see. Uh, but as I adjust that uh, um, frequency in the, um, in the LCD there, you can see it's adjusting the frequency that's output from the local oscillator. And the other thing to note is these two signals here are appropriately 90 degrees out of phase. Uh, and again, uh, I'll include all the code for this, uh, a link to all the code for this down below. But that basically demonstrates that the first crucial component of the radio, the uh, local oscillator controlled by the tiny Pico is, uh, uh, is completed. Um, now, obviously there's a lot of other components to build up. Um, and uh, you know the bandpass filter, the tailor detector. So I'll defer that to to the next video. Um, uh, so that's uh, that's all for now. Um, yeah, I will add. I'm having a lot of fun with uh, with uh, MicroPython. Uh, as uh, you know, as you uh, as you go through my code, you'll see I'm uh, no Python expert uh, by any stretch of the imagination. But uh, it's a lot of fun learning this stuff.